What's up everybody, Nate here. And today we have to talk about the housing market because something truly historic just happened. Recently, mortgage interest rates for the 30 year fixed mortgage went up to around 8%. Now that is the highest that they have been in over 23 years. So we're talking since 2000. Now that is causing a lot of trouble and a lot of brewing storms for not only the housing market, but for the entire economy. Now the big question today is what is this going to do to the housing market? Is it going to cause the housing market to slow down or crash? Or are we going to continue to see the housing market go up in value in 2023 and into 2024? Now, first, let's talk about why the 30 year fixed mortgage interest rate on average is up to around 8% right now. And understand why mortgage interest rates are so high today, you have to kind of look back what was going on over the last couple of years. So most buyers were getting a house at an average interest rate of around two to 3%. Now, of course, this is for the 30 year fixed rate. The reason that this was so low was because interest rates in the United States and economic conditions were very favorable to the buyer. So you had a lot of conditions going on in the economy, a lot of unemployment, and basically the Federal Reserve and banks throughout the United States wanted to make it a lot easier for people to get a mortgage. That's why interest rates went down, but now that also caused a lot of other issues. We also have a lot of inflation in our economy because demand suddenly spiked for everything, right? So now people were getting houses like crazy and that made prices go up that made unaffordability go up. So what the Federal Reserve decided to do back in March of 2022 was they decided to raise their interest rates, which would essentially cut demand for everything in our economy. They made it a lot harder for people to borrow money. And when people have a lot harder of a time accessing money, well, that means that they can't buy as much. And if they can't buy as much, that demand comes down. So that is why the Federal Reserve has been raising their interest rates. And it's why interest rates for mortgages have been steadily rising. Now, we haven't seen interest rates get too crazy over the last couple of months. They were kind of hovering around 5% for a while and then 6% and then they crossed 7% and now 8%. This is because the Federal Reserve has continued to raise their interest rates while everything else in our economy has gotten a whole lot more restrictive. So people aren't buying as much, banks aren't investing as much, and that means there's a lot less money sort of floating around. So now all of these financial institutions are being a lot more careful about who is getting a mortgage. And they're sort of imposing a lot more restrictions on people. So it's a lot harder for people to get a mortgage now, not just because interest rates are higher, but because banks and other financial institutions are requiring people to do a whole lot more. You have to have higher credit scores. You have to be putting a lot more down. It's just a lot more difficult for people to get homes. And that is a consumer protection, right? Because think of what happened back in 2007 and 2008. Even before that, actually, we had tons of people, millions of people who were getting mortgages and they didn't have to show any proof of income. They didn't have to have a high credit score. In fact, a lot of mortgages back then were subprime. So that meant that credit scores were very, very low for the average buyer. Meanwhile, your average interest rate was very, very high. And a lot of those were subprime adjustable mortgages. So they were really, really low at the beginning part of the loan term, but then they went up based on economic conditions. And that ended up crashing the housing market. Today, it is completely different. I know this for a fact because I bought a house back in 2020 and back then my mortgage interest rate was very, very low, but it was very difficult to buy a house. You had to have a lot more down and you had to have a really high credit score and there was just a lot more that you had to go through, a lot more protections that are in place today. Now, what exactly does 8% interest rates hitting the housing market mean for everybody? Well, first and foremost, it's gonna mean that a lot fewer people have access to a mortgage. You basically can qualify for a mortgage based on your monthly income and your debt to income ratio. That number has to be roughly 28%. So if your debt to income is higher than 28%, meaning that your total debt cannot exceed 28% of your total income, well, that means that you're not gonna be able to qualify for a home. And the reason that this is so difficult today is because Americans in 2023 are more in debt than they pretty much ever have been. And the reason for this is because wages have gone up, but so has everything and things are getting a whole lot more expensive. So if you're borrowing money for pretty much anything, then that means your debt to income ratio is going to be a whole lot higher because things are a lot more expensive now. So you have to be able to simply qualify for a mortgage. And if you can't afford that 8% interest rate, well, then that's going to mean that you're not going to be able to get a house. If people are not able to get a house, well, that means that demand is going to go down. And if you have demand going down, that hopefully gives supply 
time to catch up to where demand should be in an economy. But right now, we're not really seeing that so far across the United States. This is because inventory is still extremely low. Inventory throughout the United States is really low because it's expensive for builders to build homes right now. And not only that, sellers are not really willing to put their house on the market because that means they have to re-enter a housing market that is kind of screwed up, right? They now have to go into a market that has 8% interest rates and around 30 to 40% of millennials bought a house over the last two or three years. They are the ones that are in their prime years for their income and they're not going to move because they have an interest rate of around two to three percent they don't want to get into an interest rate that is five to six percent more than what they're paying right now especially since their debt has gone up but their income really hasn't gone up either now many americans did see a pay raise over the last couple of years which helps them to afford more home which helps them to afford a lot other things but you got to remember when home prices go up everything else goes up too you now pay more taxes on that house and you now pay more insurance because you have to insure a more expensive home so Americans have to also pay more on their house and if their income didn't go up enough to support that well now they're losing money and then they start to cut back on everything else so basically when you have that demand coming down the idea here is that supply goes up and when you have more supply than there is demand then prices go down because there's just not as many people that want that thing so the idea here is that as interest rates go up houses continue to get more unaffordable and rates get way out of what people can afford well then that that's going to mean that home prices should in theory come down because of that. But what are we actually seeing in the US right now? This is where things start to get a little tricky because we are seeing some parts of the country where housing values and prices are coming down. A lot of what they call pandemic boom towns where people were moving to kind of get out of the office and out of the big cities. Well, these smaller cities and these smaller metro areas are starting to see a lot of pullback as people start to move back to cities and they start to get back to that pre-pandemic life, right? but there are a lot of other places in the United States that are actually gaining value right now. We're starting to see places that are continuing to get pricier and pricier simply because the people in those areas have a lot of money. Not everybody in the area has money, but the people who are buying houses have seen raises or have seen their assets like investments in their own real estate and commodities go up in value, which allows them to now go out and buy a bigger and better house or their first home, right? So prices throughout the country aren't really decreasing, but they're kind of just getting back to what they used to go up. Prices in the housing market typically go up. I mean, 2007 and 2008 was a housing market crash and that was very, very rare. A lot of the conditions that caused that crash are not in the housing market today, like I already talked about. But what we're seeing is more average growth. So typically on average, your house is going to appreciate in value by around two to maybe 5%. And this is exactly what Fannie Mae, a mortgage lender, anticipates the housing market is going to do in 2023 by December. Housing prices are going to go up by around 4% on average pretty much everywhere because people are still buying homes. Yes, in inventory is very low and that just makes what demand is left in the market still very high. But I mentioned at the beginning of this video that there is a lot of storms brewing in the housing market right now and this is where you have to kind of be creative and not just look solely at the data and look at what is actually happening in our economy today. We have Americans who are more in debt than they pretty much ever have been. Credit card debt is going up and because Americans have taken on so much for their housing payments, well that means that foreclosures in the first half of this year have already started to rise. Now, to put this in perspective for you, they were at a record low back in 2020 and in 2021. They started to go up in 2022 as the Fed raised interest rates and things got a lot more expensive because of inflation. And in 2023, foreclosures have started to go up again. But like I said before, this is not at a historic rate. We're not seeing foreclosures like we saw in 2010 where they hit a record high, but they are starting to spike. And the reason for that is because everything is just getting a little too expensive. Housing market is usually usually really strong because Americans for the most part are going to find a way to pay their mortgage and we have a lot of protections for the average consumer to not just have them be thrown out of their house. This is something that came up during the 2008 housing market crash. It takes a long time to go through the foreclosure process. It takes a long time to even get to a foreclosure as mortgage companies and banks, well, they have to give consumers the benefit of the doubt and as many chances as possible to make their mortgage payments and try to get back even as quickly 
quickly as possible. So they have to give those chances. So the housing market and foreclosures are what we like to call a lagging indicator because it takes a long time for them to sort of show their true effect on our economy. But there are a lot of other things that we can start to look at. For instance, we can look at discretionary spending for Americans throughout the United States. Now, consumer confidence is pretty good, which means that Americans believe that they can go to the store and they can buy things and they're not really going to have to struggle too much. But we've also started to see saving rates go way down in the United States, which means Americans are pretty much spending all of their income right now, whether it be at the grocery store or just on discretionary spending. Most Americans don't want to spend what they're spending, but they don't really have a choice because everything is so expensive right now and their income is not going up. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you work at a place where your boss or your manager has told you, hey, the raises this year might be a whole lot smaller or we're actually freezing raises altogether because our business is kind of struggling and we're preparing for this potential recession in the future. Well, businesses are not saying that for no reason. There have been a ton of bankruptcies over the last two or three years of some of the biggest businesses in the entire world. And the reason for this is because it's getting a lot more expensive to be a business and it's getting a lot more expensive for businesses to operate based on loans. Not to mention investors are not investing as much right now. So businesses are essentially shrinking and they're either laying people off or they're saying, hey, we're not giving you a raise this year. The raise is going to be a whole lot smaller. And that means that even though the cost of things is going up still because people are still spending money, well, eventually people are going to run out of cash. And some Americans have already started to run out of cash. Eventually start to see this snowball effect that could eventually spiral out of control into the housing market. Americans are still spending money at places like Walmart. They're still buying groceries because they have to because it sucks not to eat, right? You have to have food. You have to have water in order to survive. Same with your shelter. When Americans start to struggle, well, now they start to pay their bills that don't necessarily cause them to have a worse off life. Some of the things that they stop paying is their car bill, right? So now the car loan that they took out just over the last couple of years, a lot of Americans have started to not pay those anymore. We've started to see car delinquency rates go way up in the United States and they've actually hit a 29 year high. Why? Because Americans don't have as much money to spend on their car anymore. Same with car loans in general. People are not buying cars as much as they used to because a new car or even a used car that you take a loan out to get way more expensive. So people are no longer doing that. And that means that that part of the economy is shrinking and that's going to eventually trickle on down into a lot of people's incomes and into the housing market. But what we can take away from that is that Americans are struggling in one way or another. But two takeaways that we can make here is that saving rates are going down and are pretty much zero. The average American has next to nothing in their savings right now. And Americans are also struggling because they're not paying some of their bills. This shows that there is sort of these systemic issues in our economy. And what does that mean? All of this eventually trickles down to the housing market because it's one thing after another. Next, people stop paying their credit card bills. Next, they do stop going to the grocery store. Next, they stop making their mortgage payments. Many people over the last couple of years, because of things like the Great Resignation, they were able to get a raise at their job. But again, this is a lagging indicator because millions of Americans suddenly got all of this extra income, but that extra income is eventually going to disappear because in 2022, your boss may have given you a 5, 10, or 15% raise, which was huge when they had the money. But eventually, year after year, you might not see a raise for a long time. And you not getting a raise eventually is going to catch up with the inflation rate, and it's going to catch up with the value value of your home going up. And eventually a lot of Americans are going to realize they've taken on too much debt and they spend too much money every single month, which now means they don't have as much money to go out and spend and pay their mortgage and do anything else, which eventually leads to our entire economy shrinking for everybody. Well, the last thing I want to mention here is that demand for homes is still really, really high in the United States, but many Americans can't afford that 8% interest rate. So instead they're going towards the adjustable rate. Adjustable rate mortgage demand actually hit an over year high just a couple days ago. And the reason for this is because rates are typically lower, which allows people to get into a home a lot cheaper. But adjustable rates also have one huge con because you might be able to afford them today, but three or five years from now, that rate is going to reset. And if the economy is in a really good place with low interest rates from the Federal Reserve, well, you may actually pay a lower mortgage rate. But if interest rates are higher than they are today, well, now you could actually pay more on 
your mortgage. And if you don't have the funds to do so now, well, what are you going to do? Well, you can go into foreclosure or you can sort of sell your house. And that is exactly what could eventually happen to the housing market if we continue to see 30 year interest rates going up while people then are pushed into adjustable rate mortgages. Right now from our federal government to just the average American, well, everybody needs to be careful because we sort of have this massive debt bubble growing in the United States. Americans are becoming more and more in debt every single day through student loans and credit cards and now mortgages and car payments and all of these other things like even grocery payments, right? Because you can use buy now, pay later services and basically finance your grocery store trips, which is also something that has gone up. The federal government is doing the exact same thing, borrowing more and more money and potentially even going into default because, well, it just can't continue to print more money and borrow more from other countries. Eventually, Americans need to realize that things just can't go up forever. This goes for everybody. So you have to be very careful about how much debt you're taking on right now because we don't know what the economy is going to look like in the future. We don't know if incomes are going to go down because unemployment's going to rise. We don't know if prices are going to continue to go up for everybody. Meanwhile, people don't make as much money, which makes them buy even less and even less and save even less too. So now nobody has money to buy investments. Nobody has money to put food on the table. And that is a serious problem that many economists and CEOs are warning could eventually send us into a recession. And all of these factors when it comes to spending and income, all of them trickle down into the housing market. And the housing market is especially bad if it crashes or starts to slow down because we're not talking about small loans here. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars essentially disappearing because nobody can pay anymore. That hurts the banks, that hurts businesses who are tied up in the banks, and it hurts Americans who are tied up to those businesses with their jobs and now have to be laid off or go into unemployment. There are a lot of different factors at play here and we don't know exactly if the housing market is going to continue to go up or if the housing market is going to continue to go down. It really just depends on what demand looks like and what supply looks like. Right now we're facing another historic housing market and while the history that we're facing today is very much different than it is in 2008, it's still something that you need to pay attention to because even if you're not a home buyer or a home seller, these factors can still affect you, which is why you have to be prepared with your money and know what to do with it. Whether the housing market goes down or whether it goes up, you have to be prepared because that's how you're going to protect yourself, your family, and your assets. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.